<laughs> Don't yeah. update. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll update uh, almost every other week or so. I guess that's good. Uh, yeah, not showing. All right. So let's see. This works. Yes. So this is how I would do it. Um, we got a whole lot going on here. Fairly, you know, a, 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 not a fairly, an extremely sophisticated model. Multinomial logic models are are out of this world, sophisticated. Um, but I think if we can, you know, chop this up into digestible sizes, then we can get people to understand this. So the first thing I would do is kind of law of demand stuff, um, own price effects. So here's our own price of our, this is Keebler. We got a, we got a filter there, this is Keebler. <coughs> we can compare this with, again, oops, Nabisco and private and sunshine do these individually. Uh, the nice thing about having the own price, and again, there's no, uh, there's no cross price effects here, but having the own price effects here is that you can um, see the effect, uh, you can see who's more, who's more or less price responsive. So in this graph, we know that flatter means more price responsive, uh, steeper means less price responsive. So, and we can, chip, we can pick any price. And, Another thing I like about Tableau is picking those, uh, as long as we choose small enough intervals for prices, and in this I, I chose uh, one cent increment, so I can choose essentially any price. Uh, let's see, so we can pick a price like, that's 90 cents, let's pick a buck. There's a dollar. And so we got that, and then we can compare the probabilities with using the drop down menus. And if you recall, that a dollar was about an average price for these things, uh, for, uh, for these box crackers. So, uh, again, at a buck, um, you're most likely to pick Nabisco, then Private, then Keebler, then. Um, than sunshine. So I like the drop lines, uh, and, and again we can we can increase price and see what happens, or we can decrease price to 90 cents and see what happens using our control. So for So again, we can see where the, where the distance between the two um, is going to be the price difference. So again, it's going to get kind of complicated, but oh, uh, pay for Java. Should we do it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but a nice graph. Again, I think if you're doing these things one at a time, it's pretty easy to get the uh, to get a good understanding of uh, the own price effect and how we can compare across and and how these are essentially competitive with each other. So, yeah. Keebler. Um, okay. And then we got the graphs that we generated <coughs> for the homework. Uh, own price effect. Again, this should be identical to this own price effect. And, right, so we can see that I'm going back and forth from one to the other. Uh, but here now we have the cross price effects. And this is where we can see that, okay, we know that as price, as the price of Keebler increases, probability of choosing it decreases. We got that, but where are those sales going? 
And here we can see um, specifically the effect on the probability of choosing Nabisco. And again, to, to not overwhelm, you can then add the other brands. Um, private, which is I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, private, which is uh, competitive, as well as Sunshine, which is not really that competitive with um, uh, with Keeper. Is there any significance to the point where the two lines cross? Uh, it's where the probability of so these like here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just where the probability of choosing them is the same. So if you wanted to know, if you were uh, Keebler and you wanted to know at what price is the probability of choosing uh, me and the market leader, Nabisco, what, where, where is the probability of choosing them the same? Then, yeah, you can basically read it off the graph and that's going to be around, what is that, 79 cents, something like that, 70, 75 cents. So at about 75 cents, uh, you're, we're equally, consumers are equally likely to choose um, Nabisco uh, and, and keep it. So that's where the probabilities are the same. And again, these are, these are really cool because it's pretty hard to convey this kind of information um, any other way. So these cross price effects, I think, give you a really good insight into the dynamics of um, the specific market. And again, we did that for Nabisco, we did it for Private, we did it for Sunshine, and that's how I would kind of uh, uh, introduce these things. Kind of the useful, the dashboard I created is this here that has all four of them, which is that graph that we generated in the problem set. Uh, and here you've got, uh, you can make any kind of, any comparison across brands that you wanted to. So uh, you know, Keebler versus Nabisco, and we've got Nabisco versus Keebler. And the interesting thing here is that um, even though Nabisco is a main competitor, is a big competitor for Keebler, the opposite's not true. That is that uh, Keebler isn't much of, of a competitor for Nabisco. So we don't get, these aren't symmetric. The results aren't symmetric. These two, this one tells us that um, uh, as the probability of Keebler decreases, that the price of Keebler increases and the probability of choosing Keebler decreases, people are gonna go mostly towards Nabisco. <clears throat> so it tells us that uh, Nabisco is one of our main competitors. But that's not necessarily true for Nabisco. Uh, as the price of Nabisco increases and the probability of choosing Nabisco decreases, it doesn't look like very many people are going towards Keebler. So the, the asymmetry of those effects, I think, is a big deal. And then we can do this for any, any uh, combination of these. Uh, let me do Keebler here. Keebler here, uh, and you know, so we've got this four panel graph, but what we don't want is to have the four panel graph you guys did here, which is static and kind of overwhelming. Uh, what I end up doing a lot of the time is prior to things like um, uh, Tableau, what you end up doing is pretend these lines are here and just concentrate on this one. <laughs> That's a tough sell because that's a that is a really overwhelming graph. But if you can if you could again tear it off into bite-sized pieces, uh, we got the whole law of demand thing. We understand that. We just need to uh, be able to introduce these cross price cross price effects uh, in such a way. And again, I think this is a good way to do it. Uh, introduce them one at a time. And then at the end, you say, okay, here's a dashboard where you can analyze all four of them simultaneously. I was trying to figure out a way to include this fifth one, um, but I couldn't. Not, not, not to include it, bless you, not to include it uh, in a visually appealing way. So this works because you got four equal sized ones. Uh, a fifth one is gonna minimize these, is gonna make all of them smaller. 
Uh, I saw one student put the fifth one on top so it spanned two graphs and it kind of elongated it too much. Uh, I couldn't figure out a way to, pick, to, to put that fifth one in there where you can compare the, 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 the own price effects directly. Um, so I just haven't done it. So this is what we want. All right, so how do we do it? I'm close this sucker. And um, we're just going to essentially try to regenerate that, that, um, that worksheet. So, import a data set. Let's start with let's see. I think this is the home ones. Here, see prices. This is where a mouse is really nice. But we don't have a mouse. Dimensions, we got that, and then we can throw the other ones in there. So this one, what well, we've done in all these. There. Um, one thing that's nice to do is get rid of this number of records that's in there. Uh, Tableau creates that automatically. That's not something we generated in this data. Um, it's not necessarily something bad, but we don't really need it. So we can get rid of it. Let's see. And we can either just uh, literally get rid of it by deleting it. And for whatever reason, I don't like the all button. It's okay, so there's our dashboard. We can do that. We can change the probability, you know, change the value to probabilities and all that kind of good stuff. All right, so let's do the next one, which is that first panel of the graph. That's going to be a new data source. So you can create a, 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 a dashboard with several different, from several different uh, data sources. Let's see. I think I called it MLogic One Tableau. So it should be downward sloping. All right, and the other ones are going to be cross price effects, which will be probably upward sloping. So filters. Here we want to get rid of a couple of things. We don't need number of records, and we don't need at three, because at three is price. So we can put at three here, and it gets rid of it in the, when it my screen, it gets rid of it in the filter. Uh, and we can actually move number of records over here if we don't want to delete it entirely, and, get rid, and it gets rid of it from the filter also. And we can get rid of the all. And, and one of the reasons I get rid of the all value is because when we construct that four panel graph, um, you want the, you know, the fewer the, the selections, the better because it, it starts to get cluttered as you get too many values. Um, all right, so that's graph one. And again, we can change the labels and do all that kind of good stuff to make it look a little bit nicer. And then just uh, new data source. They're all Excel files. Tableau doesn't read in its data files. Alright, this will be sheet three. This 
one was F4 was the price. This is the Nabisco because I did it alphabetically. So we should get our nice downward sloping graph. There we go. Uh, then we can add our cross price. So this we've done before. It shouldn't be too difficult. So one, two, uh, data sheet, new data source. So this would be. Sloping, so that's good. Everything else is going to be cross a cross price effect there. 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 By the way, the reason we don't need that is um, if you click on it, remember at one is our price of um, it's private. So if we have it as a selection and we select it, it'll basically create like a 45 degree straight line. So it really has no useful purpose to it. Uh, we don't need to select it. The, the line adds nothing to our understanding of, of what we're doing, so uh, we get rid of it. Filter, move that, move that, get rid of that. The only other thing I would do is if you go across these, so these are our own price effects. Sheet 5 is 
private. All right, the only thing I would do is um, what's changing in these graphs? The y axis. Yeah. The y axis is, is changing and if you really want to do a comparison, they should probably all have uh, set y-axis. So it looks like the x-axis are all set to zero to two dollars, uh, but the y-axis is it should be set from zero to, to one, which is and again it'll just make it so it doesn't shift when you when you uh, move things around. So um, zero to one for all of them. And it'll make the comparisons uh, smooth. And this one, which already looks like it's zero to one. And this kind of things will uh, at least drive people crazy. But they all, they'll also drive people crazy that are used to, like I said, visuals. Marketing people, if they know anything, it's it's visuals. It's what they do. Even if they've never seen anything like this, they'll know, they'll see that the axis is shifting. All right, so we want that dashboard. Getting this part is, it's pretty easy, and the dashboard's actually pretty easy also. So the dashboard is that these are all worksheets. The dashboard will be done under a, a new worksheet, but a new dashboard. And um, notice that we have access to all of the worksheets. So essentially all we're going to do is grab, grab the worksheets and construct this dashboard. Um, it's actually pretty easy. I mean, Tableau, this is the beauty of Tableau. It's drag and drop. So I told you we are going to do the, the price and cross price, so here it is. Uh, let's see, device, I need to change this. Desktop, I'm going to change this to laptop. All right, that looks a little bit better. All right, so that's our first one. Let's go. There. But notice the filters stay. Um, the filters stay where they were. So this is just a matter of. Dragging stuff and put it, putting it. All right, and then we're just going to drag private uh, down here, and then drag its there, and then its 
good thing. There. And sunshine. pretty close. You got the filters on the sides. Um, what you need to do now is just um, try to expand the graphs as much as possible and try to get rid of as much dead space. So we don't need you know, this dead space here. If we push this out, it'll make the graph uh, larger here. We'd like to get uniform graphs. Um, this is about as good as I am at Tableau. That way, um, if we, yeah, that doesn't look that bad. I mean, yeah, little stuff that'll drive me nuts is this is a little bit higher than that one, so we could. And it'll give you an indication of when these start to uh, level up. That you get this little black um, arrow. Um, let's see if we get it. So I'm going to drag this down. That's the little black arrow I was talking about, but that's my aligning with the top of that. That's not even. Um, if you end up, for example, doing that, it'll put that little scroll thing there. Uh, you don't want that, so bring it back down so you don't have the scroll thing. Uh, and that's it. I mean, that, other than kind of relabeling your x axes to their respective prices price of Keebler, price of Nabisco, price of Private, price of Sunshine. And I think putting the y-axis as probability of choosing, um, of probability of choice, I think is what I had, or it could be, uh, yeah, probability of choice. Because you're going to have those cross price effects, uh, the probability is, is if you're looking at uh, private, it's the probability of choosing private. If you're looking at Nabisco, it's the probability of choosing Nabisco. Uh, that goes down. As the price of private goes up, probability of choosing Nabisco goes up, probability of choosing private goes down. So, um, as I said when we did this, if we can construct that graph in Stata, <coughs> it's not much of a, of a uh, uh, the next step, putting together the dashboard is pretty easy. Any questions? I think this is awesome. And again, um, you can publish it to uh, Apple Public. All right. No questions? Obviously, we can do this again with promotions. Um, and cross price effects on the same dashboard. Not that you're going to do it, but if you were going to do it, for example, 
uh, you would, yeah, there's no way to do it. <laughs> but just think about it because you can put your own promotions, so you can put promotions by private here, so you can put own promotions uh, and see what happens when uh, private promotes, uh, but you wouldn't be able to do any kind of cross promotional effects, which is what we did in uh, the Heinz and Hunts, the uh, Pikachu example. So, uh, so yeah, you, yeah. So the question, yeah, you, you could, but even that would be, um, even that would be starting to get a little bit cluttered. And yeah, and that would be problematic. So, so having a separate one with promotional effects is, is probably uh, the way to go. We're not going to do that. We're going to we're going to look at the promotional effects, um, but we're not going to put together a, a gigantic dashboard of promotional effects. It's we've already did it one, done it once. This one, uh, so we did promotional effects for ketchup. We did cross price effects for. Um, crackers. And that's really all you need. You need crackers and ketchup and you've got a party. So, all right, let's look at the cross price effects. I'm, I'm sorry, the promotional <laughs> effects. Uh, we're done with this. This is good. It's actually not that, that far from the first one I showed you. So. All right. Last week. One or two. One isn't it? There's no final, right? After this one. Yeah, there's no final. So just one? Final week is eleven. Yeah, you're right. You guys want to stay over the break of Christmas break? Sure. I've got enough. I said I've got to be with my family. Um, all right, let me show you before you get All right, so here's our choice variable. Uh, again, the data comes from Nielsen like that. We've got to construct this choice variable. Variable. Um, let's see, what do we do? Promotion effects. Uh, okay, here's our M logit with just all of our stuff. This is the whole 